Hello. In this video, we are going to do another calculation involving the so-called colligative properties. One of the important colligative properties is the depression of the freezing point of the solvent when we add a solute to the solvent. In this particular example, we're going to look at the problem from a slightly different angle. And what we're going to do is we have a volume of water, 500 milliliters, and what we want to do is reduce the freezing point by exactly three degrees. Therefore, we want the new freezing point to be minus three degrees centigrade. And the way that we're going to do that for this particular example is to add a certain mass of the compound calcium chloride. So we recall that calcium chloride is a strong electrolyte. And if we dissolve it into water, it's going to do the following thing. It's going to break up into one calcium two plus ion plus two chloride ions, chlorine minus. Therefore, when this particular molecule breaks up, it's not really a molecule, but we'll think of it as a molecule. When it breaks up, it breaks up into three distinct particles. Therefore, using our previous terminology, we can assign the value i, the Van T Hoff factor, of three, because calcium chloride breaks up into three ions when it dissolves. So now we want to ultimately figure out which mass, or what mass, of calcium chloride has to be added to our 500 milliliters of water so that the freezing point would drop by three degrees centigrade. So we need again to use our formula, which is that the change in the freezing point is going to be equal to I, this Van Toff factor, times the cryoscopic constant K sub F, or the freezing point depression constant, if you want to call it that, times m, where m is the molality of the ultimate solution. So we want to solve in this particular expression for m, because we can figure out the value of k sub f by looking up in a table of constants. And we notice that this particular constant has the value of 1.86 degrees centigrade divided by molality. And you'll notice that if you compare it to the nebuloscopic constant, the boiling point elevation constant, that the values are not the same. And in fact, for the effect of one uh, mole solution of the solute has a far bigger effect on the freezing point than it does on the boiling point. Typically, we exploit this particular phenomenon when we salt the roads to uh, reduce icing and the buildup of ice on roads and on uh, sidewalks and steps so that we know, since we know ice is slippery, if we can prevent ice from forming, we can help to prevent people from falling and injuring themselves. So ultimately we're exploiting this particular colligative property when we do that. So now, since we know the value of K sub F, we know the Van Toff factor I being equal to three in this particular case. And we even know what the change in the uh, freezing point is that we want to affect. We can solve for the molality of the solution that we need to create. So let's insert the values here. We have three degrees centigrade. I is simply going to be three. K sub F is 1.86 degrees centigrade divided by molality. And then M is our unknown in this particular case. And that is what we want to solve for. If we go through this using the standard methods. We determine that the molality that we want to strive for is going to be 0 0.53763 mole. So if we can make a solution of calcium chloride is 0.53763 mole, we will have reduced the freezing point of that solution 
from zero degrees centigrade all the way down to minus three degrees centigrade. Next, we recall that if we have 500 milliliters of water as our solvent, that the density of water is very, very close to being one gram per milliliter. So this particular volume of water will have a mass of 500 grams. We always need to perform a calculation of this type when we're doing molality calculations because molality involves the mass of the uh, solvent not the volume of solutions. So that's the big difference between molality and molarity. And for the freezing point depression and the boiling point elevation, we need to use the molality. So now let's work out how many moles of calcium chloride that we need. So again, we use the fact that we have already determined that we need a solution that's going to be 0 0.5 three, seven, six, three mole. Well, that means that we have 0.53763 moles of calcium chloride in one kilogram of solvent, which is H2O. In this particular type of calculation, we can exploit the fact that when we use the factor label method, when we use dimensional analysis, we can write as much as we want so it can be very clear as to uh, which particular substance we're referring to. So we have kilograms, not simply kilograms, but kilograms of water. We also know that in this particular case, uh, we want to figure out how many moles of calcium chloride we need for 500 grams. So a nice way to achieve this is to first use our conversion factor that one kilogram of water, in fact, one kilogram of anything, consists of a thousand grams of that substance. Last but not least, we know that we need this for the situation of 500 grams of H2O. We can see that if we can cancel units properly, that kilograms of water will cancel kilograms of water. Grams of H2O will cancel grams of H2O, and we'll have determined how many moles of calcium chloride need to be added to the 500 milliliters of water. And once we do that, we see that we're going to require 0 0.2688 moles of calcium chloride. Once we have determined exactly how many moles of calcium chloride will be required, we only have one step remaining. And we have to convert from moles of calcium chloride to grams of calcium chloride. Because none of the balances that we're going to find in our laboratory, no matter how much we spend on them, no matter how expensive, will ever weigh things out in moles. They'll only weigh things out in units of mass, like grams. So, you see that we have 0 0.2688 moles of calcium chloride. We're assuming we're using an anhydrous calcium chloride here. And we also notice that the molar mass of calcium chloride, so this is the mass of one mole of calcium chloride. And we would determine that to be 110.983 grams of calcium chloride. Again, it's very good to double check that we can cancel units properly, moles of calcium chloride, cancel moles of calcium chloride, and what we determine is that we get an answer of 29.83 grams of calcium chloride. And since the smallest number of significant figures that we've used in the calculation is three, we want to round this to 29.8 grams of calcium chloride. Of course, this should be a 
2, not 3. So to summarize, what does this mean? It means that if we start with a solution of water that is pure, that has a volume of 500 milliliters, if we were to weigh out 29.8 grams of calcium chloride, dissolve that mass of calcium chloride in the 500 milliliters of water, and then measure the freezing point of that solution, we would find that the freezing point of that solution, rather than being the zero degrees centigrade of pure water, would have dropped to minus three degrees centigrade. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.